Oh, hello. Welcome to the channel. Today is going to be my set review on the Avengers Tower. Now, I'm not going to shoot the whole video like this. This is just the beginning of it. Um, I just needed to show you guys how actually big this set is. It's huge. I mean, I'm on my knees right now, but this thing is huge, okay? It's the biggest Lego Marvel set ever, and it's just, it's really big. Um, I might maybe do a comparison between the Daily Bugle and all that fun stuff, but for now, we're just going to be showing off this set right here. So, of course, I'll get more in depth, and I'll get behind the camera, and I will show you guys, of course, the piece count, the minifigures, and all that fun stuff, and all the play features, and all the references that are actually in this set. So, without further ado, let's get started. Get started. So, Marvel's Avengers Tower set number is 76. 269 recommend ages is 18 plus and the piece count is 5201 pieces while the price points is $500 now I usually do not say the price points in my videos but of course this is this is a very expensive set okay and I'm very grateful that I'm actually reviewing this set for you guys and I'm actually happy that I got it for Christmas because this is a $500 Lego set everybody everything that you see here is $500 now there's, there's a lot to justify for that price point. Of course, 32 minifigures. The 32 minifigures you get in this set are Tony Stark, Mark 7, Mark 4, Captain America, the Endgame version, Captain America from the Avengers version, Thor, Black Widow, the Wasp, Ant-Man, Kevin Feige, Hawkeye, Wanda Maximoff, Falcon, Vision, War Machine, Pepper Potts, Wong, Nick Fury, Dr. Cho, Hulk, Dummy, Eric Selvig, Tony Stark, Shield Agents, Shield Agent, Shield Agent, Alexander Pierce, four Jatari, one Loki, and one Ultron. Now, that's a lot of minifigures. And, of course, if you count um, the micro figure for Ant-Man and the dummy that is actually in the build somewhere, we're going to, of course, uh, stumble upon him later. If you, call those, um, if you don't call those minifigures, then I guess there are 30 minifigures in total. That are full minifigures. And of course you also get a Leviathan as well. And a couple chariots and everything. But yeah, this is a really big set. Now of course the minifigure layout is actually very important. Now um, I'll explain later in the video why some of the figures were in this set. Because I actually did my research on this set. So I could get all the Easter eggs that are actually packed in this set. And all the figures and why people chose the figures that they chose for this set. And a lot of it will surprise you and a lot of it will kind of disappoint you. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get started and let's take a look at the first minifigure, which we're just going to go down the line of minifigures on the box. We're going to start off with Tony Stark. So I'm actually just going to review the figures right here, um, just so we can do something different. Um, and this thing is just so massive, so... Here is Tony Stark. Now, I'm not going to spend a long time on the figures that we've already gotten. So this is Tony Stark in his Black Sabbath shirt now. We've gotten this figure already. He's the same, and he reuses the same face for all three of the Tony Stark variants that are in this set. Um, so here is the first version. This is a very kind of boring figure. So yeah, of course, the detail on him is nice. Um, if you want my full thoughts on him, go check out. I think the first uh, set that he came in was actually the... Uh, uh, the uh, Sakarian Hulkbuster. So go check that out if you want my full thoughts on him. But yeah, there is Tony Stark. And now we're going to move on to the next figure, which is Iron Man Mark 7. So here is Iron Man Mark 7 now. I actually have another version of him because he is another duplicate. This figure actually came in the Quinjet that I think came out earlier to this year or last year. I do not remember. Um, but in my short, I actually show off that Quinjet next to this thing. And it looks really cool. Now, once again, the detail on him is incredible. I still love this figure. It makes sense that we're getting a duplicate of him because it is Avengers Tower. But once again, he reuses the same face again from the previous uh, Tony, which I wish he kind of didn't. But I still am kind of growing on these new helmets. They're kind of um, growing on me. Um, but the printing is great. All the printing on him is incredible. And of course, the back of him as well is great. So... That is it for Iron Man Mark 7. Now we're going to move on to Iron Man Mark 4. Iron Man Mark 6, actually. Here's Iron Man Mark 6. Uh, sorry that I said Iron Man Mark 4. I don't know why I said that. But here is Iron Man Mark 6. And 
This is an exclusive minifigure, and he is, of course, different than the Iron Man Mark um, 7, of course. Um, of course, they kind of do look the same, um, but he is a very new figure. Now, this is the battle damaged version, so probably later in the future, we'll be getting a uh, Mark 6 that actually has all the printing, but it's very nice to see that triangle heart shape on there. Again, all the detail, once again, is incredible to see on this dude. Of course, if you go to the back, it also looks um, great. Um, but the catch with this figure is he has a translucent head. Um, so this is actually a, uh, a kind of droid, I guess you could say. But other than that, it's a great figure. I love the, like, the scratches on the face and everything. It looks incredible. And I love that they're able to do that now just because of this new helmet, which is kind of why it's growing on me a bit more. Um, it's because of this helmet. So... That is Iron Man Mark VI. Of course, we're going to go on to the next figure, which is Captain America Endgame. So I guess since I'm showing off this figure, I guess I'll show off the one that also came in the set because they're identical to each other. Um, so here is basically, um, there's two versions of Captain America in this set. The reason why is so we can recre recreate the, um, well... America's tube size, I guess you could say, uh, from the instruction manual, which we'll look at later, but it's the America's ass joke. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I am kind of friendly on this channel. I don't really swear that much, but it, it's necessary, man. I mean, tube size, really. So the America's ass joke, I guess you could recreate in this. So that's why you get two Captain Americas. But once again, this is a duplicate from the Quinjet set that we got, like, I think earlier this year, um, but of course he uses the Steve Rogers Han Solo head, which I guess uh, got carried from the uh, What If sets, so there it is. Of course the back printing is cool as well. Also he has a shield, which you do get two shields, you see a shield later in the set, um, but here is him with his mask on the Avengers version, I guess, and the face still looks really great. I love the angry expression, and it kind of does represent a little bit of the unmask expression a little bit. I mean, just like a little bit, but I still like it a lot. It's really cool. Um, of course, uh, this this is a great figure. It's really good, I guess, to have two figures of him. Um, but once again, of, of course, I'm going to recreate that meme in uh, this set, obviously. But those are the two uh, Captain Americas. Now we're going to move on into Thor. So here is Thor and... He brings up a very cool new thing that was actually introduced for this set. Now, it's not the lightning piece. It's actually the piece I decided to remove. So, this piece right here, um, you probably saw it in the No Way Home um, set review that I did. I actually do have these pieces. But, this was actually created for this set. So, you do get a lot of these. And when I mean a lot, you get a lot of posing and um, pieces. And I actually did leave some on the set um, but you get a lot of clear pieces which i love that they give you that um, but of course looking at the thor minifigure before um, we put that piece on him um this is the same figure from thor's hammer if i'm not mistaken this is the same figure so um it is kind of a new version just because he has the mad eye moody hair piece which thank you lego for actually putting this piece on here because all the uh, all uh, custom uh, figures of course have been using this hair for him because it, it just works perfect um, of course, he uses the Fat Thor face, which um, it kind of works, I guess, for him. I guess it's the new standard uh, Tony face, I guess, for him. But, of course, he does have some back printing, which is really cool. Now, I didn't get the Thor's hammer set. I was thinking about it. So, this is really nice to actually get him. But now that figure is not really exclusive anymore. Um, this amazing lightning piece that I think showed up in Ninjago is actually in this set as well. Um, but you can, of course, add this to the posing piece to make it look... Like he's actually throwing Mjolnir, which is actually what the hammer is called. It also does come with a clear base because, of course, this thing is just massive. But what you're able to do is kind of make it look like um, he is, of course, throwing the hammer. And um, I can't really get him on any studs. So um, there he is. He looks like he's actually throwing it, which it's, it's really cool. It's a really nice piece, and I love that they actually gave that to Thor. Um, of course, he does come with the one hole cape as well, which it kind of bellows out a little bit more than I would want. Um, but that is it for Thor Odinson. And now we're going to move on into Black Widow. So here is Black Widow. And this is technically a new figure. Um, so the whole upper um, chest 
the chest upwards is all from the um, Quinjet set. So the arm printing and everything, it's amazing that we actually got that on this figure. Um, I really love that a lot. Um, but the legs, legs are brand new for this set and they appear on three other figures, which of course is Clint Barton and of course Falcon, which we'll take a look at them separately. But you get the same legs for all three of them, which kind of sucks but i mean they did the same thing with civil war i mean it's kind of the same legs that they used for civil war um but she does come with this black gun which really works for her i don't know why i like this more than the actual guns that they put in this set for uh um the other figures but this looks really nice i like it a lot um of course the jen is jen urso head makes a return on this figure which since they're saying the same for every single Black Widow, and it kind of actually does look like Scarlett Johansson, I'm a okay with this new head, and of course the back printing is great as well. So that is it for, I guess, the semi-new version of Black Widow. Now we're going to move on to the next figure, which is of course going to be Wasp. All right, here is Wasp, and oh man, of course... Before I say anything about how great this figure is, if you guys are wondering actually why she is in this set, there is actually an original comic book um, panel piece that is actually in the set. I'll show off later. Um, but in that set, um, the original Avengers were Wasp and Ant-Man, um, not Scarlet, Wh um, Scarlet, Scarlet Witch, um, Black Widow and Hawkeye. So it, these figures are in here to represent the original comic book Avengers, the comic book Avengers. So that's why she is here, so you could recreate that in the MCU version. It's kind of weird, but I'm not complaining because this is an incredible figure. Now, this is my updated version of the Wasp. Um, this figure didn't actually look this nice. Um, I did remove the sculpted antennas that I added on here, which kind of made this helmet a bit more gross and dirty, but who cares? This is an evolution, okay? This is incredible. The way they were able to Listen to the fans, and everybody wanted like a parademon um, wings, and people were using parademon wings for custom versions. So the fact that they took the same material they made with parademon wings and actually made new pieces for Wasp for her wings is incredible, and I love that they did that. Um, of course, the worst part kind of is this bracket. It's an easy fix, but why? I mean, I understand that they want to like do this, I guess, and you can kind of make it look like. I guess she's flying sideways like that, I guess. I mean, I guess that's what it's for, but man, it's it's kind of, it's weird a bit, and um, hopefully the back piece didn't come off, uh, thank God. Um, but this this printing is incredible. I love the hexagonal patterns that are actually on this figure, and the helmets kind of looks a bit weird from the front because it's very metallic, but the side is not that metallic, so it's a bit strange. But oh my god, it's just once again, and they even updated it from being like a weird kind of greenish to yellow. I love that. And the torso is also brand new. It's a little bit new because, of course, these stopped manufacturing back in 2018 when the uh, Ant-Man sets. Of course, it's retired now. Um, but the new printing is incredible. Of course, if I remove her back neck attachments uh, to actually see the back torso... It looks great. Once again, it's it's so cool, and I do wish they gave her these yellow power blasts. That's what I did on my um, updated version, but it's incredible that they were actually able to basically do this to Wasp and bring her a new figure in this set. So I don't care if she's not, like, never showed up to Avengers Tower or whatever. This is needed. Okay, this is needed. Now, now we can complete the new helmet versions of Ant-Man and Wasp. You do not get this Ant-Man in this set, if you were wondering. But they look great together. Oh, my God. They just, oh, they look great. Um, that is it for Wasp. Of course, some leg printing would have been great and stuff. But I actually did forget one thing, which is actually kind of a bummer with this set. Now, if you take your helmet off, you get this head. And this head is okay. It, it works. So you also get a hairpiece. This, this head works. I mean, it's okay. Um, I actually did forget to mention real quick, I'm not going to go back and edit, but you do get a extra hair piece for Tony in this set. Yeah, I'm not going to go back and stress it. Um, this of course, um, is an all right head. 
it's it's not horrible, um, but it actually creates a civil war problem. Which, if you guys weren't wondering for civil war, um, civil war they use the same head for two figures, and those are in two completely different sets. Now, this person and Pepper Potts are the same figure in the same set. They have the same face. That's never been done before, I don't think, on a Lego Marvel set. They've only been in two different sets that had the same face, but this is the same figure with the same face. And it's very strange. So, of course, after I'm done with this, I'm gonna replace this head with the Princess Leia head, even though that head wasn't as good as it was on Wasp. Of course, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, this head. Um, it's actually kind of the, um, oh, I actually switched this head out. Um, this is actually the Tina Goldstein head. So I'm actually going to replace this head with the Tina Goldstein head because I think that works way better, um, which I maybe might do a Build a Better Avengers Tower set. I don't know. Um, but that is it for Wasp. I think I've talked much about her already. Great figure. I love that we actually got her in this set. So yeah, that is it for Wasp. So here is the next figure. We have Ant-Man. Oh, wait, actually, hold on. Um, we have Ant-Man, and this is a micro figure. Yes, this is a little micro figure that you actually get in this set now. Um, you get two versions. This is actually the extra. The other one is actually in the hand of uh, Tony Stark um, to represent Endgame. But the fact that you get a micro Ant-Man is also really cool. And it looks even better when you put a micro Ant-Man in a Wasp's hands. Um, which, of course, we just looked at Wasp, but here she is. She looks great with Ant-Man. Um, now, if you guys actually want a detailed look, I'll actually give you guys that in right about now. So here's a more kind of detailed look, I guess. This is under kind of like a magnifying glass, so that's why you can see it really well. But, yeah, it's kind of barely hard to see, but the printing is there. It looks really good. So, yeah, that's it for Ant-Man. All right, here's the next figure. Kevin Feige. Now, I have a lot of things to say about this dude. Um, the first thing is, it's great that we're actually getting an official person in real life in LEGO that represents Marvel, I guess. Sucks we couldn't get the other incredibly more popular icon for Marvel. I mean, this dude's cool, not gonna lie. I mean, I love that we got Kevin Feige in this uh, set. Um... I mean, it's cool. It's a great exclusive figure. I love the detail and everything. I love the exclusive head, the torso, which looks great in the back as well. And the Avengers cap that does come on a taxi promo that I do not have. But um, if you got around Black Friday, you get. But it's still an amazing figure. But And he also does come with a little bit of shawarma. But I wish we got Stanley. I mean, I can't sound like a broken record. Um, everybody agrees too. Stan Lee should have come in this set. He needed to be in this set. I mean, we've waited too long, okay? He's been in countless video games. He's known by everybody. This dude is just, I mean, he made Marvel kind of on the big screen, but that was more of, uh, John Favreau. Like, John Favreau brought, like, the first Iron Man movie, which we don't even get Happy Hogan in this set. And... Um, we don't get um, the first Avengers, which, of course, I kind of, I don't think anybody likes him anymore, but uh, Josh Whedon. Uh, you don't even get him in this. You get Kevin Feige, which, I mean, he's cool, but he's just the president of Marvel. I mean, I kind of don't like that we got him in this set. I mean, he's cool. Don't get me wrong. I love that we actually get to add him to our collection. It looks exactly like him. It's just, um, kind of wish we got Stan Lee, um, but still an amazing figure to get nonetheless, also with the coffee as well. Um, but now we're going to move on into Hawkeye. Continuing on with the OG Avengers, we got Hawkeye now. Once again, this is a great figure to get. Um, everybody was complaining because he wasn't in the Quinjet set, which now we get him now. And I don't really kind of like this hairpiece as much. I wish it was in brown. It would probably work better for Hawkeye, but it is kind of, I guess. Um, it does make sense that we get this hairpiece because we also get one in the Avengers. Um, the Avengers... Uh, uh, CMF series, uh, series two for Marvel, and um, of course his outfit is great to get. I love that we're getting that once again, the reuse of the Black Widow legs that we saw earlier. The face kind of looks like Jeremy Renner a little bit. I don't know. I think they could, should just, if they're going to use the one from the CMF, they should have brought it back over here. 
Um, if we remove his quiver, you can actually see his back torso printing, um, which does work really well for him. And his quiver also looks really nice as well. And I really do like this figure a lot. Um, it's just kind of wish his hair was in brown a little bit, but the blonde also works really good. Um, and the new quiver piece is making a entrance on this. I haven't really talked about this. I did get it on my Kate Bishop, but I didn't get Hawkeye. Um, but this is a really cool figure. Uh, the inclusion of his brown glove as well is really cool. I just love that we're now getting a remastered version of uh, Hawkeye in this set, which is really cool. So that is it for Hawkeye. And uh, now we're going to go on into Scarlet Witch. So here is Scarlet Witch, and I feel like the Lego did a really good job with this figure. Now, a lot of people didn't really like Scarlet Witch a lot from uh, the uh, previous sets. Um, they didn't like her in the Multiverse of Madness set. They thought she was under detail. But this is kind of the Avengers Infinity War version, but this is supposed to represent the Civil War version, which the reason why she's in this set is to represent the Avengers team at the very end of Age of Ultron. So that's why she's like this. I mean, that's why she's in this, but don't understand the blonde hair. She's supposed to have brown hair and don't understand why they couldn't make her Age of Ultron version in this set. Who knows? But of course, the um, head is pretty cool. It's the same Multiverse of Madness head. It didn't really work for the Multiverse of Madness version, but it kind of does work a little bit well for this uh, version right here. I don't really know the, about this expression. I think it's okay. Um, the blonde uh, Wonder Woman hair piece is great to get. I haven't gotten it yet in blonde, so it's, it's great to get on this figure. The torso, once again, I never talked about that figure. It's great. Waist cape, thank you for bringing back for this figure. Should be on more figures. Don't know why it isn't. Um, but her also hexagon pieces right here work great for Scarlet Witch. She does come with a clear brick to levitate. Um, but she looks great. And um, I love that sh she looks like this and she's cool. Um, and that is it for Scarlet Witch. And now we're going to go on into Falcon. Here is the new Falcon and... I really like this figure. Um, this is an exclusive figure for this set. Um, but I think everybody's going to say this about this figure. And they have said it. Um, first off, let's talk about his wings. Um, his wings are okay. Okay, they're not perfect. They're brick built. Which, everybody wants that mold from the CMF series. But CMF series kind of has a different budget and everything. So, this figure is okay. These stickers were hardcore to put on. They're even on the back, and you get Red Wing again. Thank God it's not that big brick-built thing they put in Civil War. It's actually just a piece. Um, so MGF uh, 2016 would be very happy with this set for, like, literally everybody, um, except the Civil, uh, except the same faces. But the face on him looks great. It's a new exclusive face. Um, I do love that they took advantage of not having a separate expression and just decided to print a black band to continue the goggles. Once again, like Nick Fury, I kind of wish they could connect these together, um, which I'll talk about that in a little bit later with Nick Fury. It's just this, I wish the strap went all the way around, but of course, the new um, Falcon hair that they introduced with him looks great here, um, and the brick-built wings do move, and they're cool. Um, they're kind of fragile, though. <laughs> a little bit fragile, but of course, if we remove his head, we actually go underneath... And take a look at this. Um, he does have actually some great back torso printing, which does work really well for him. Once again, reusing these same legs um, on Black Widow, reusing them here. Look fine. I mean, nothing to complain about. Love that they have these guns on here. They actually include the Alien Conquest gun in here in this set, which is probably just a joke, but I love these guns on him. Looks great. And the stickers for the wings look great as well. I mean, they're okay, but. That's it for Falcon. Now we're going to go on to the next figure, which is, of course, going to be Vision. So here's Vision. Um, this build that they uh, tell you to build uh, for Vision. But here he is. And oh my god. This is incredible. Now, I actually do have White Vision over here. Which I think a lot of people are wondering what they look like next to each other. This is a custom cape that I added. But they look great together. I, I wish we had arm printing. But... Once again, we're probably never going to get that for an armor vision, but oh my god. This vision is mid. He's okay. <laughs> he's pretty mid. I don't really like him as much as everybody keeps saying that he's like the best figure in the set. I don't like the translucent part, okay? I As soon as I saw this figure, I was like, he's cool because they finally took 
the actual vision design and trans made it in Lego because all the other visions were based on concept art because they made the original vision back in Age of Ultron and then they brought it over for Civil War and changed the Mind Stone to yellow instead of blue like they did with the original. And then they just kept that same figure all the way to 2018 until Vision died. So we never actually got an accurate Vision and it sucks because it's clear. And I know that in the future, Lego is not going to make this nice cape for the new Vision. And they're, and they're probably going to make him have blank legs. So it's cool. I like this Vision. I mean, the printing is great. The, the use of the cape is incredible. Uh, same material they use for Wasp. But of course, the printing on the back is incredible as well. I just, I know for a fact we're not going to get a good Vision that is as top tier as White Vision, but not as top tier also as this Vision. So it's going to be like in the middle where... They're going to reuse some parts from this set uh, to make a new vision. Maybe hopefully they do Age of Ultron sets next year or something um, because I really would love to get a new vision. But everything else is just great. Like, it's a great figure. I love them. Anyway, that's it for vision. Now we're going to move on to the next figure, which of course is going to be War Machine. Another duplicate figure. We're going to kind of um, go quick on this so I'm not spending this whole time on these figures. Um, but, of course, face is great. It's okay. It's the same face that they use for the other War Machine because this is the same figure that came on the Hall of Armor set, which I already have that set, so this is kind of a reuse for me. It's so pretty cool, though. The printing is great. Of course, you guys haven't seen the back. Um, it, it's pretty cool. I'm not going to remove it. You guys can just go check out my Hall of Armor set review if you want my thoughts on this figure. I still think it's really cool. Uses the new helmet. It's great. Anyway, that's it for War Machine. Now we're going to move on into Pepper Pot. So here's Pepper Pots, and once again, a reuse of the uh, figure from the Iron Man Mayhem and um, Iron Monger Mayhem and also the Hall of Armor set. But once again, I already said the thing about Wasp reusing the same face. It's okay. It's just, it's, they're two completely different people. But um, same figure. It's pretty cool. Go check out my Hall of Armor and Iron Monger Mayhem if you want my full thoughts. Um, but this right here is really cool. Now, Ashton Flash actually said this is a reference to the first Iron Man movie asking for a hamburger and a press conference um, after as soon as he came back which is pretty cool. Um, I think that's what the reference is, but it kind of just looks like that. It could be a random person. Who knows? Um, but that, or it could be just Tony, maybe because it has a spiky hair piece. But that's it for her. That's a sticker as well. Um, now we're going to move on to the next figure. It's, of course, going to be Wong. So here's Wong. Dumb inclusion. I, I, I said how happy I was in the advent calendar to get him in there. We're also getting him in here. They're just kind of destroying this Wong figure that came perfectly in the Sanctum Sanctorum, which don't get me wrong, the figure sucked in the Sanctum Sanctorum. It sucks here. The Bricktober is going to be superior. Fight me for it. I don't care. This just, it's its kind of sucky anyway. He has a hot dog. Who puts mayo on a hot dog? It's a reference for something. I don't know. Um, it's kind of what the reference was. But once again, same figure. Don't want to waste time. It's a big set. It's going to be a long review. So um, we're just moving on. Let's go on to the next figure. So of course, it's going to be Nick Fury. Nick Fury, cool figure. Gone in before. Pretty cool. That's what I meant by the strap not going all the way around. Um, there he is. Comes with a walkie-talkie. An alien conquest gun, like I said earlier. Oh, man, I don't know why those things are back, but who cares? Um, Samuel Jackson. Lego Nick Fury. Pretty cool. Anyway, let's go on to the next figure, which is Helen Cho. Okay, finally, a semi-exclusive figure. Okay, so here is Helen Cho. And she uses faces from um, Camp Cretaceous, uh, Jurassic Park or whatever. Um, really cool face. Also was used on Pam in the office. So this face has been used before. I think the nurse's torso is not exclusive as well. Gets the job done. I really do like this hair piece as well. Looks nice. And it's pretty cool. Um, of course, she also has a syringe. Really nice. I kind of wish that we could get Amadeus Cho, which is her son, in the comic books. And he becomes totally awesome Hulk in the comics, which is pretty cool. But that is it for Helen Cho and our Dr. Cho. And now we're going to move on into the Hulk. Got to zoom out a little bit for this one. Here's the Hulk. And I love this Hulk figure. But the one thing that made me really mad when I actually got this dude out, and it's probably only going to be on mine, none of yours. Um, but if you actually zoom in into his eye, I actually have a little bit of printing misprinted on his eyeball, which... Doesn't look as nice as I wanted it to. I mean, I was looking really forward to this figure, and then that kind of took me out of it. I know you can barely see it, 
but you can see it on a camera. It's pretty noticeable, but other than that, if he had a completely white eyeball, here is the Hulk figure, and I think he's pretty cool. Now, this uses the new Thanos big fig body that they added for the Avengers um, 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 Final Battle, which, of course, was reused on the uh, Avengers Final Battle again, um, which is really cool. But the new thing on him that everybody is talking about is that he has a removable hairpiece, which a lot of people were saying that it was just going to be a new mold. And I love that they added that. Now, originally when I saw this, I thought he was going to have an alternate expression because that's what hair pieces are for. But no, he does not. It's just a plain old uh, minifigure head with some printing on it. Um, it still looks great. I love that they took this, uh, the original Hulk figure, the one with the tan pants, and actually colored corrected them this time and put them gray. I love that. He has studs on his back, so of course you can put a figure like Black Widow on his back, which, where is Black Widow? Oh, here she is. Um, so you can take a figure and put them on the back and kind of make it look like um, Avengers Age of Ultron, I guess, um, which this figure still looks incredible. I, I really don't know how I feel about the studs on the back. I was kind of iffy about that, kind of just like the smooth back originally. But um, other than that, his head can move. It's pretty cool. Um, it's just a minifigure head, which if you guys don't know, which is pretty cool. Um, but that is it for the Hulk big figure. And now we're going to move on to the next figure, which is of course going to be Eric Self. Eric Selfick. Pretty cool figure. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this face is a reuse from another figure, but there's a catch. This was actually made for the actor who plays Eric Selfick which is really awesome that they actually took that head because it's from Star Wars. It's from Star Wars and or set. And they made this head, and I love that they're actually taking that head and bringing it to the Avengers because it's the same actor. So this is a really cool figure. Of course, the torso, I think, is from Friends, if I'm not mistaken, or Seinfeld, I think, one of the two. It's a really nice torso print. No alt... Oh, actually, it does come on the alternate expression. I wasn't thinking that he did. Um, but here he is. Here's an angry expression. I love that they actually brought this from the other sets because a lot of people were probably buying that set to make custom Eric Selfix, but he does come with a computer piece, which does make sense for the final battle of New York. Um, if you don't know how computer pieces work, um, you can open them, if I can actually, um, which it's just on a clip, so let me just open this real quickly. There you go. Pretty cool. I remember when I first got this, it was cool, and then I lost it, and I'm glad that I have it again. Really awesome. There he is, Eric Selfick. Pretty cool figure. Now let's move on into Tony Stark Shield Agent. So in this set, we're gonna start army building. We have some Shield Agents now. We're gonna go through all of them really quickly since they're the same figure. We'll go off with this dude first. This is just like a normal cool torso print. I do not know if it's exclusive. I don't think it is. Um, but of course, the face is really cool. It's the Black Panther face, which is really nice. Um, and it was also, I think, on yeah, I think it is the Black Panther face, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and of course, he does have some goggles that you can bring down. It's really cool. Some uh, handcuffs and a gun, and it's really nice. I'm um, going on the next figure here is the actually the Tony Stark version. You get the Tony Stark head and this again. Same torso, same stuff. There you go. There's Ant-Man in his hand. He also does have the suitcase, which kind of wish we kind of got some detailing for the suitcase, but who cares? The next uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. agent is actually using the Ironheart face from the uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever sets, which is pretty cool, but of course also she does come with the same exact outfit. So those are the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. They're pretty cool. Army building. There you go, that's it. Let's move on to the next figure. Here's Alexander Pierce. Um, pretty cool to get this dude. Um, in Lego, of course, he uses the James Bond hairpiece, um, which is pretty cool, but he also does use the face from, I think, Indiana Jones, if I'm not correctly, uh, if I'm not correct. Um, leave a comment down below. But of course, the torso is a gray suit. Um, all this is all reuses, but it's still really cool to get this dude in Lego. Um, and it's very um, appropriate to get him in a uh, Lego Avengers Tower, but it also would be cool if we got some Winter Soldier sets with him in it. So yeah, that is it for Alexander Pierce. And now we're going to go on into the Jatari. Now, now the Jatari, you get four versions, which is really cool. These are all just the same figure that we've gotten before. It's really cool. It's a really nice figure. I love the new updated version that they did. And, of course, you also get one with some guns and stuff. It's really cool, once again, for some army building and for some figures that your Avengers can attack. So that is it 
for the Chitauri. Now we're going to move on to the next figure. Here is Loki. Once again, he is a reuse from the Avengers um, Quinjet set, but of course, we'll just take a look at him real quick. Love that they actually took a gold helmet this time, and it isn't like a weird gold. It's really nice. The back torso printing is great. The face always worked amazing as well. He does come with a hairpiece, which is really nice if I cannot drop it, which is great. Um, but I, I keep dropping his hair, man. Um, but here it is. It's pretty cool. And of course, you can do this. And there is a funny uh, meme for him in this set if you want. Of course, you also do get the staff in this, which I kind of wish they could make a new piece for it. I'm not complaining, though, because I actually have a knockoff piece, which is incredible. I actually have it right here, so I can show you guys. Boom, there you go. It's really awesome. Go pick it up on... Yeah, of course, go pick up that staff on an eBay website if you guys didn't see it. There you go. It's pretty cool. Anyway, that is it for Loki. Um, pretty cool. Now we're going to move on to the last figure, which is... Ultron. Oh man, this is probably going to be an hour-long review. Here is Ultron from Age of Ultron. This is Ultron Mark 1. He's really cool, man. I really love how he looks. Um, I kind of wish they used a translucent head, but he looks incredible. Of course, you could see all the amazing printing on this guy, and he just looks great. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I really love that we're getting Ultron. I kind of wish we got more Ultron-themed characters in this set but that's it all right that's it for all of the figures in this set and now we're actually going to start taking a look at these side builds so yeah let's start off um yeah let's get on with the side build so of course in this set you get a couple of side builds uh, one of the side builds that i actually put on display um was this you get a portal for wong and this is probably one of the like I guess kind of cooler ones. I mean, they're not really that cool, but you can take Wong, which we kind of just looked at, and you can put him, of course, um, of course, dropping the hot dog, um, but you can put him in here. Um, you can put him on this base, or um, like I do sometimes, you can, of course, just put him in there and make it look like he's jumping through the portal. And um, with these things, um, I'll show up more on the sets, but you have, of course, ways where you can plug him in. So if you want to do one, right here of course there's a plug in right here so you can plug wong in right there into the building i'll show more in detail later in the set review um but of course the portal is probably one of the cooler ones i just kind of put it um on the building which we'll take a look at later um the other one that you get is of course the iron man mark 7 um it's the iron man mark 7 right um yeah the iron man mark 7 you get this build, and this is when Tony jumps out of the building, or when Loki throws him out of the building, and it basically catches him, and he turns into um, Iron Man, of course, but it's a really nice build. It does use a couple stickers, so here it is, here and here, um, or here and here, and I kind of messed up on this sticker, so that's why it's kind of like that, um, but usually I just put it on the, uh, the actual set, which once again, we will take a look at later in the set review of it deployed, the deploying out, which it's pretty cool. Um, and the, of course, the other side builds that you get are the little, uh, these uh, little Jatari chariot type things. So, of course, you can put the Jatari on here and you just put them on two studs on the back and um, just put them like this and they kind of go forward a little bit. Um, but it's a really cool build. Um, I really like it a lot using the iron uh, kind of Thanos fingers, I guess, uh, the new fingers that they added to the mechs. And of course, they can zip around and stuff. And they do have this ball uh, kind of ball joint on the end. That is so you could connect these two chariots together, which you get two builds of these in the set. Um, of course, you get this one, which this one's for Loki. So you put Loki back here and you put a Tatari at the front, which... The builds are really cool. I love the gold and everything. It looks really nice. And these things are on ball joints. They look really cool. And of course, the iron spider um, arms, which of course show up later for the, um, the Leviathan, which we'll take a look at later. But of course, it's on a very loose ball joint. Once again, um, I put this usually um, flying around on there, which of course I'll show you later. Um, but the last thing that you do get as a side accessory is of course the second kind of build that you get is the leviathan which yeah of course you have the leviathan and this thing just looks great for this the scale is not so much um 
but as just like a, a separate kind of build, it looks great. This right here is just incredible, the way they were able to capture it. And it looks great underneath too. But this new base as well is very nice. So, of course, you can take the Hulk or someone. And um, it's not as big as the movie, of course. Hulk was able to jump all over this thing. And it wasn't as small as this. But if they were going to do everything size accurate, it would probably increase the price point of this set. And, of course, increase the builds. And this would be like a $1,000 set. But, of course, nobody wants that. So, pretty cool build. Really like it a lot. It's really nice. The scales and everything, it's pretty cool. So, there's the Leviathan. And the final build that you get as a side build is another thing that's shrunken down so it could fit in the set. Is the Quinjet. So, the actual side of the, as of the Quinjet... Of course, I did a set review on, but this is the smaller version. And this is a pretty cool version, not going to lie. Um, it's pretty cool. You can only sit one minifigure in here, um, which it's very limited to only one figure that can fit in here. So, of course, if we just take the uh, top off with those studs, of course, you do have some stud shooters. And um, they're not filled up right now. They're actually back here, which is where the studs are back here, um, which is pretty cool. But, of course, I'll put that back on. Um, it's a really nice build. Um, it's it's not the build that I went for, the stickers, because if you do know the actual Quinjet that you build um, gives you two sticker sheets. It's either the Shield logo or the Avengers logo, and I went for the Avengers logo for mine. So this is technically a new ship entirely, um, but it, it's pretty cool, man. I really do like it a lot. Um, of course, um, the figure that actually kind of belongs in here is Nick Fury, um, but you can fit Captain America in here. Um, I tried to put him in here, and he does fit. It's it's pretty snug to get him in here, but there are a couple stickers actually on this, um, which we will take a look at in a minute. But, um, of course, you can put Steve in there if you like. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. He fits. It's really nice, and you can fly around. But there are some stickers, so we're going to take a look at that real quick. Um, so the first stickers you get are double stickers right here and here. Those are the same exact sticker. Um, of course, you also get some on the uh, Nexo Knight shield pieces, as well as on the end right here. You have a couple kind of caution shield logos a bit right there. And, of course, on the back of the wings, you also have the shield logo as well. And uh, they're really nice stickers, man. Now, of course, later in the set, I'll show you how to put this into the Avengers Tower, because you can. That's why they shrunk it to this size. I don't think it's a great build, but it's very nice that the people thought of it and they actually put in the set. It's not my favorite Quinjet. I still love the Quinjet that's on display, and I'll keep this one in the hangar, but I will, of course, leave my actual Quinjet out. And it's probably obvious already, but you cannot put the Quinjet that LEGO made already in this just because it's too big. Anyway, that's kind of it, and um, we're now on to the actual set, so... Yeah, without further ado, let's let's break this thing down. So here's the front entrance. It's really nice. Of course, you have these uh, things to barricade any um, cars into basically ramming into the front, which is really nice. Um, you have a bench and you have a sticker right here, which let me remove it and actually show you guys. You have the Battle of New York Memorial, which has Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, Thor Ordenson, Bruce Banner, Natasha Romanoff, and Clint Barton now. Bruce Banner is not actually in this set, and a lot of people got mad over it. I'm not really that mad. I have a Bruce Banner figure. I know it's the Avengers Infinity War one, but it's the same thing. Of course, you also have a fire hydrant right here, which all of this stuff is kind of on. Um, can come off easily. You also have a lamp post, which is pretty cool. Um, but just the actual overall like build and everything is really nice. Now, building it from the ground was pretty boring but it's it's pretty cool of course you have some technic pieces right here to connect this and the door is open which we're gonna go on the inside just a little bit later we're gonna take a look at everything on the outside though um on the side if you've never collected any modules before um they have technic pins so you can connect them together now what's very interesting about this one is that you can remove this technic pin and put them on either side because i heard that the daily bugle kind of messed up its technic uh pin thing so of course, they have it here to fix it, which is really nice. So, of course, moving this thing around. Um, this plays a big playability, which I'll zoom out more later. Um, but this whole panel comes off to basically get the whole interior, which we're going to take a look at later. But just looking at all of the detail on the outside, it's pretty cool, man. Now, of course, that piece just fell off because I'm, I'm like moving like a really heavy set. 
Um, but of course, on the back, you have a sticker, which we'll zoom in, in right on now. And um, of course, it, it's pretty cool. It's the, of course, the Captain America exhibit, as well as the Avengers sticker. And it is, it's really cool, man. Um, of course, you also have a box out here, which is just on a jumper as well. You have a trash can. We're going to take a look at that in a minute. Um, but the first other sticker you have here is the pager from Captain Marvel. Um, the one that Nick Fury uses to call Captain Marvel in Avengers Infinity War end credit scene, which is pretty cool. And um, right here, this stud stayed back, but who cares? Um, but you have a trash can. And yes, there's always going to be goodies in the trash can, um, which is pretty cool. The first um, goodie that you have is some pin particles. This is really cool. Of course, this is a sticker. It's really nice to get that, as well as a piece of thrown away shawarma, which is pretty cool as well on a ch on a tile, which is on a sticker. And of course, you also do get a green Groot, baby Groot in here. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, it's just some green waste, which is pretty cool, man. I really like it a lot. Um, overall, that's kind of really it for the... Um, Outside, I mean, there really isn't anything else on the outside of the uh, of the tower. It's just everything you see here is here. Um, of course, there is um, Technic holes, like I said, um, which basically you can connect um, any of the Technic beams, which I do have on the wall above. Um, but you can take these and you can put them anywhere on here, so you can make it look like a superhero is flying. So you can take Iron Man and make it look like He's levitating off the ground, which is pretty cool. And you can do a bunch of stuff with that, which is really nice. And I really love that they added that in this set. So, of course, that's kind of it for the exterior. And now we're going to, I'm going to show you guys how to actually get into this thing. Man, this damn fire hydrant keeps falling down. But, of course, now I'm going to actually show you how to get into this thing. So, there's actually one more reference on the outside that I completely forgot about. Of course, if you open the trash can, there's bubble gum. There's bubble gum. It's pretty cool. It's just the bubble gum container. And um, of course, it's really nice. And I, I just, I really like this um, that they decided to just add this. And uh, yes, I completely forgot about the trash can, okay? I completely forgot about it. Don't blame me. It's just a trash can. Um, but yes, now officially, if I can put this lid on here. Yeah, let me, let's just let's just go on the inside of the set already. So to take a look at the inside, it's very different than other modulars. You can actually see some of the bars that I've already hung up on here. Um, but what you do is you actually take off the whole window. And this has been a little bit tricky for me um, just doing it. Um, of course, I'm going to also remove this build, which yes, um, what I usually do is I put this build right here, which is of course coming off, but it already is showing you right there. What you do is you basically take this whole window off. So let me actually zoom out a little bit more so you guys can see it. Um, here you go. So what you do is you basically just slide it on off and there you go. You get the interior. So here is this big window, which is just two Full bags is just perfecting this. Sorry, I bumped the camera. Um, but perfecting this basically, there's my ring light. <laughs> but it's really cool, man. It's a really nice build. So let me get this out of here so we can actually take a look at the interior of this set. So we're gonna start off level by level. There's like four levels in this whole set. We'll break them down and everything. Um, so without further ado, let's get started with the bottom. So the bottom is a little bit dark, so let me see if I can actually shine a light on in there. There we go. I got my little light right there. So you can actually kind of see the interior of this thing because it's so dark. But of course, the big thing that sticks out is right there, the Tesseract. And yes, the Tesseract's a bit big, but it's supposed to represent Loki. This is obviously supposed to represent the beginning of Episode 1 and Avengers Endgame when the Avengers fail to get the Space Tone in 2012. And of course, they get let Loki become a branch timeline, which leads to the multiverse, which is crazy that this one event right here leads to that. But of course, it is just the Minecraft Minecraft head that we've been getting in um, a couple sets. Not that many sets, but a couple. Of course, you also do got some chairs that are around here. Of course, you can put a minifigure in there, um, which you probably know how that works. But the other thing is you get a little... Um, 
Vita, Vita, little Vita, um, Vita Rush, which is really cool. It's a really cool thing. Of course, the chairs are on jumpers, so they're just going to pop off. So let me just, um, I'm just going to take them out for now. So they're not in the way. Um, but for this, um, everything on here is a sticker except this piece right here. That's a print. Um, but it says Smash Your Thirst and it says Vita Rush, which is actually a Lego City brand, which is really cool. Um, but of course, there's a PIM logo, which of course is supposed to represent um, PIM Industries, which is really nice. Of course, um, you do get some bottles in here, um, which is really nice. You get um, a green one, an orange one, a I think a yellow one. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. You get some cans and everything. It's really nice. Um, I love, I always love their little vending machines that they do in here. It's just super cool. Um, but getting them back in here is always a pain to do. Um, but let me just do it real quickly and uh, so we can move on with the rest of the set. Let me just stall, um, which, yeah, let's just... Of course, I actually put the last one in there. I forgot to mention there is a little soda cap, which is really cool, man. Um, but that is it for the little kind of... Vita Rush uh, vending machine right here. So let me just put that back there. Um, but if we go back in the desk, it's it's very hard to see back there. You can barely see it. I'm trying to shine my light in as good as possible because it's, it's really hard to see back there. Um, but of course you do have a desk, which this desk is really cool because of course it does have a little sticker on it, which is barely, you can barely get it. But there you go. You have this little sticker, which um, is just a kind of reception a little thing you can barely kind of see that on there but it's just um, a sticker for just some text or something um, but it's it's pretty cool on um, the glass table back there is really nice as well um, but just sticking that back in there um, this this the little desk down here is always the hardest to get into but if you can barely see it right there you do have an elevator which is right here which connects to all the floors so yes you have to build this like four times um, which does kind of suck, um, but you do also kind of get some uh, builds down there, which is really cool. Let me just kind of angle it right there. There we go. Um, but you do get some more chairs back here, um, which is, oh, no, it's not actually a chair. It's the, it's the gate, but um, it's kind of it for floor one. I mean, it's kind of compact because it's the bottom floor, and it's always hard to get your hand in there. So I'm sorry if it's very dark in there. All the other floors will kind of be a little bit lighter, um, just because it's not um, the darkest floor. But that is it for floor one and um, and how we're going to move on into floor two. Moving on up into floor two, you got a bunch of stuff. Now, there's something actually on the exterior, which we're going to take a look at too. Um, but right here is really cool. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is this bracket. So if I move the camera to actually see this, um, this is really cool. So this is an Avengers Endgame thing, which you do actually get two Captain Americas in this set to recreate this meme, which everybody is going to do. This is actually my first time doing this. But, of course, what you can do is you can take um, this chair out of the way, um, which for some reason that is on there, very tight. Um, my God. Man. Um, but, of course, you do have this uh, chair. Yeah, of course, getting that chair out of the way um, and putting Captain America down, you can actually recreate the Captain America's ass scene, like I said. And it's it's pretty funny, man. It's pretty funny. It's pretty cute. It's it's really cool. Um, of course, there is some broken glass from the fight that they had above, which we'll take a look at. Um, but before we actually take a look at that, there is a sticker back here, um, which, taking a look at that, it's basically just saying the um, Mark... Um, Seven has deployed and of course is coming down. That's on a round sticker as well as the keyboard tile, which was also on the other floor as well. I'm just going to get that out of here right now so we can actually take a look at the top one before we get rid of this so we can look back there. Um, but here's the glass thing. Of course, you can put the Captain Americas on here if you like. Um, so there is that one. And then, of course, you get the other one as well. Um, you can put them on here to make it look like they're fighting. And yes, the shield is built in to look like that, um, which is really cool. But of course... Um, we got to remove this so we can actually take a look at the inside, which this is very nicely able to come off easily um, just by those jumpers right there. Because, of course, we need to get on into the back, which the back is probably one of the coolest parts. So what you can actually do, th this is on a jumper. No, it is not. 
it is actually built in on there, which kind of sucks. But you do got a sticker back here that does say this right here, which is, of course, the arc reactor as well as Tony's helmet. And um, putting that back in there, it's really actually hard to get this out of here. But if you don't understand what this is when you're building it, this is basically Jarvis and Ultron fighting each other, which is really cool. I really love, like, the the look of it, which is really nice. Um, of course, we do have another chair in here, which let me remove that again, which is pretty cool, but it's just in the way kind of right now, so let's just remove that. Um, but of course, you also do got the mine stone right there as well, which is really nice, and as well as the bed, so yes, you can put Clint, Bar Clint Barton on there. I'm not going to put him on any studs or anything because we'll be here for hours trying to get him off, um, but there you go. It's pretty cool. It's once again very painstakingly back there and um, it's really cool all right don't get me wrong it's it's cool that they put that back there but it's just it's so back there and of course like i said again there are the elevator doors right there which if you could barely see they're there okay i'm not lying um but they're there um but of course obviously i'm just gonna put these chairs back in here real quick and um other than that it's kind of it for this floor um but of course yeah that's kind of it it's, it's a really simplistic floor, but there is some really cool thing on the outside. So yeah, getting everything rebuilt and kind of zooming out a little bit. Um, actually, on this floor is very cool because you can actually see part of the window sticking out. And this is a really cool thing that you can do. Now, what's really cool about this right here is basically um, what you can do is you can take the Hulk Big Fig and you can make it look like he is coming down the building, which... If you guys saw my live stream um, for the uh, the Daily Bugle, you could tell that I don't like broken windows, okay? I'm probably not going to play a clip here because it's just going to take forever to find that. But I was legit getting angry over the broken window. So this is is okay enough. But yes, this has broken a number of occasions um, with me, of course, taking the Hulk big fig off of there. Um, it's it's really cool, man. It's, it's really cool. And um, it's really nice. Before we actually take a look at the next floor, I just have to compliment the way that they were able to actually build this, which I know it's it's very hard to actually show the outside of this thing, but I have to show this off. So the way that they actually did the trim right here is incredible. I love this. And we'll take a look at the A logo at the top later. Um, but I just love the way, they, the way that they did this, which it was painstakingly hard. This set is made for 18-year-olds. You, yourself, if you're like below 18, like maybe 16 or 17, like my around my age, you'll probably be able to do this. But if you're like any younger than that, this thing will just give you the hardest time, which it gave me the hardest time. You have to build this exactly correctly and everything has to be in the exact spot or else it's not going to work. That's one thing that I did not like about building that. Um, of course, you could see that I attached Wong's portal right there. And it's really cool, man. It's a really cool thing. And I really do like that a lot. Now, that's kind of it for the kind of outside a bit layer and a bit on the inside. I'm kind of doing everything at once just because it's so damn hard to film this thing. So, of course, now we're going to be going on to the next level, which you can kind of see what's on the next level. And you can probably take a guess on what we're going to be talking about. Moving on up into the next one, I actually have a little bit of an Easter egg on this video um, right here, which is pretty cool. Um, but we're going to talk about it in a minute before we're going to actually take a look at the other minifigure I did not show off. Just because I kind of don't count him as a minifigure, this is Dummy. Now, Dummy is really cool. This is probably like my least favorite build that we've had of him. We've had Dummies for a while. It's probably my least favorite, um, but it does make sense because, of course, he does stand on here which is really nice. Now, this is obviously Iron Man's part. Um, you could probably tell already by just this. Of course, let me shine that light in there so you can see a little bit better. Um, but just removing dummy so we can actually take a look at everything that is in here. There is a couple stuff on the ground. The one other thing that's also in here um, that's pretty cool um, is this little build right here that does show the actual Ultron sticker on there. And I did actually know that that was on the top, the 16... Um, 1968-54 is, of course, I believe his original appearance. I don't know, but I did hear that in an Easter egg video. So, of course, I'm going to point it out in this. If, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, but 
whatever. Um, anyway, of course, moving it to the side to actually take a look a little bit. In here, you can barely see it, but if I can actually move it a little bit, you can actually see an arc reactor, which is right here, and that's a really nice build. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, that piece is once also used in the set again, um, which is really nice. But if we go in the back, all the way in the back, if I can actually get my hand back there, you actually have a Roxxon container, which is the same exact sticker and piece from the Captain America Civil War tanker truck down set that first debuted the first Tom Holland Spider-Man, which is very cool and very nice information that I did not know of, um, but it's really nice to know that. Also, an amazing Lego Easter egg as well back here is if we take a look at this, they did include, include the original build for the fire extinguisher. I love this thing, man. I mean, I never actually got the Easter egg until way later into collecting Lego Marvel sets, but it is still great to see that in here. Um, the other thing that I did not know um, that is really cool is the same consistency with this and the Hall of Armor. Now, Lego made a new Hall of Armor this year or last year, I don't remember, um, which if you take a look at this Pepper Potts thing right here, which is Rescue, this is the same exact build that is in the Hall of Armors. Yes, so what you could do is if you have the Hall of Armors set, you could take any one of these. So these two on my hand right here, these two right here all come from the Hall of Armor set. They're the same build, it's just a little bit different, um, but they use the same Tron Legacy kind of dash piece, which is pretty cool. But yes, these two come on the Hall of Armor, so if you have that, you'll be able to have these two, and you can inter swap with each other, which is just a really nice detail for LEGO to actually include in this set. Thank you, Ash and Flash, because I did not know that. It's really cool. Um, the other thing, of course, is also from Iron Man Hall of Armor. You do get a micro Iron Man, which also did come on that set. It's, it's kind of nothing, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. The other thing that you're able to do with this is, of course, you're able to take the Iron Man, um, and that's actually what the instructions tell you to do, and you put him right here, and it's kind of where... He kind of docks or whatever so you can put him right there and it just it kind of fits him really well now of course we're going to remove it because there's a lot of stickers back here which a lot of them you'll be able to see and a lot of them you won't be able to see so if i zoom in back there you do got the arc reactor on the top um, right as well as a image on loki as well as this sticker as well back here which is pretty cool and you do have some hexagons which is supposed to represent the Mind Stone, or I think it's supposed to represent the Mind Stone, if I'm not mistaken, um, but it's pretty cool. Also, you do got this sticker back here, which is really cool, and this is supposed to kind of represent the Avengers, because you got Natasha Romanoff on the top. It's really hard to see these. I don't know why they included these, just like so tiny back here, but you can see them. It's pretty cool. If you kind of want me to remove them, I'll do that. If nothing breaks, thank you. Um, but there you go. There's the first sticker. It's pretty cool. Um, but just putting that back in there and um, so we can move on our merry way. Um, but the other one, of course, is, of course, on this side, which is the Loki one, um, which is pretty cool to see. There you go. It's really nice. Just a nice Loki kind of sticker. And it's accurate to the figure, which is very nice consistency. Um, but, of course, putting that back over here. Um, it's a pain in the butt to get those things out, you know, but um, they're pretty cool. I'm not going to take the other ones out because we'll be here forever. And, um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of it for this shelf. It's, it's really cool. Um, I really love all the details and everything and all the Easter eggs. Probably my favorite was the Hall of Armors one. I did not know that. It's really cool. Um, but of course, that's going to be it. I'm going to fill in everything like, um, so I'm not stalling and this vi video can be even longer. Um, but yeah, let me fill everything back in. So yeah, that's it for the Hall of Armor. Now time to move on into the next shelf, which is of course going to be the prison. On the tippy top way we go, we have the prison. Now this is actually the Helicarrier's prison, not the Avengers prison. Yes, this is on the Helicarrier, this specific prison, um, which is kind of weird. I don't know why they did that, but it's okay. I mean, it's still a prison. You can put the figures on the inside, which of course, it's meant for Loki as I bash into the top of this, but it's meant for Loki. So let me actually put it in there real quick. And um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Loki fits in there just fine. But of course, for the sake of this review, we're going to get this out. And we're actually going to get this prison out of here so we can take a look at all the Easter eggs 
that are in here, which this is a pain in the butt to remove, if I'm being honest. Oh, actually, that came out very simple. Um, <laughs> let's let's move on into all the details and stuff. So, of course, this, you do got a stack of papers right here, um, which does read, who is Iron Man? Which this is obviously an Iron Man 1 reference, which is very cool. I love that they added that sticker, and it's pretty cool. Of course, I'm going to remove that, so we can actually take a look at, yes... Yes, they did. And yes, that is him. They did, of course, decide to add this dude in here. And if you guys are probably like wondering, who is this? Um, I just broke him. Um, but who is this? Well, big time Marvel fans know exactly who this is. This is the first debut of Arnim Zola in a Lego set. This is really cool. This is, of course, a Winter Soldier reference, which is really cool. And I really love that they added that in here. I love that they added that. Um, of course, he's two stickers. Obviously, they're not going to make him a prince. Um, but this is really cool. Of course, he looks great next to Captain America and everything. And um, he just looks great, all right? He looks absolutely perfect next to Captain America. I mean, they look good together. So there he is. Um, the other thing that is way back here is actually a bucket. And the bucket is supposed to represent probably a leak in the um, tower. I don't really know why the bucket is there. Um, but if we take a look at the side, if I could barely see it, there is an elevator door um, that is in here that does show Hulk smashed the window, which is really cool. All the other elevators are completely blank except this one. Of course, you can also see the tiles up there much more easier. Um, but that is it for the second to last floor. Now we're going to move on to the upper deck, which there is so much at the upper deck. Of course, I'm going to fill in all this stuff again because... Uh, can't have it looking barren here, you know? Yeah, that is, of course, the second to last um, floor. And now we're going to move on to the tippity tippity top. So here is the very tippity top. This thing just looks incredible. So, of course, before we take a look at the actual landing deck, we're going to actually take a look at the Avengers A logo because, come on, man, it's the Avengers Tower. You got to show off the A, man. That's like the main Avengers like catching thing. So, here is the A build. I love actually the way they did this. It's it's using a hinge, which is really nice. And the arrow piece is just really great, man. It's really cool. But this front side is like normal, right? It's, it's pretty normal. So of course, if you turn it around, they're going to obviously put in like a weird thing, um, which is actually, no one really pointed this out, but it's actually reference to the Daily Bugle back here. And if you don't know what it is, it's a bird. And there was a bird on a nest on the other Avengers kind of uh, set, which is, it's it's pretty cool that they added the bird on here. Of course, the Avengers logo is just replicated on this side again, because it, it's, there's no need to make a new one, so there's, they just kept it the same. Um, there's a lot of removable panels. We'll take a look at that, but of course, just taking a look at it right now from the front, um, there is one giant play feature, and it's kind of the one thing why they added this, and that is, of course, is if you take the Quinjets, and, um, of course, before we do that, let's just... Yeah, of course, before we take a look at the uh, kind of Quinjet, you do have a clip right here, which, yes, um, there are clips right here. And you can, of course, put a minifigure on there, which is really nice. Um, we'll take a look at the whole exterior and all the fun stuff that you can do later. Um, there is kind of some cool detail right here. Um, if you guys actually want to see that, it's it's pretty cool. It's, it's really nice. It's just some nice little detailing. And the way that they did, like, the wiring right here, is really nice. We'll take a look at the whole inside a little bit in a minute, but of course, just uh, taking a look at this thing, like uh, taking a look at it real quick, you're able to actually put the Quinjet in there, which is really cool. So all you do is just you fold up the wings, like in the set, and uh, of course, kind of just put it in there like that. That's it. It goes all the way in there. All the way in there it's really cool looks really nice and um, that's kind of it for the uh, whole kind of extra thing of course there's a little bit more upwards that we have to go um so yeah let's do that so of course i'm just going to hold the camera for this because it's really hard um but there is a panel right here you can remove this really quickly so let me just do that um you can remove this panel which is a really nice build really nike it nike it like it pretty cool of course you can also remove this panel as well which just slides off and of course the final panel that you can remove is this panel as well which goes upwards and it's really nice um, but 
Taking a look at the inside, you can barely see it, but of course there is the Avengers thing, which we're gonna remove just for a second. You do get a bar back here, which is really nice. Um, you get a bunch of drinks and everything, and just the benches and everything. Um, but it's really cool because you actually get a sticker right here, which, let me just remove this Avengers uh, cringe it for now. Um, and let me get my hand in here real quick. Um, you do get a little, 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 little um, sticker, which if I can actually show it off real quick. Um, it does say, um, the Battle of New York, if you were wondering. Um, but it, it's so dang small. Um, the Battle of New York, which is pretty cool. Like it a lot. It's a really nice sticker. This is actually a reference to the, uh, actually a reference to the, uh, Daredevil, which is pretty cool. I don't know how, it just is a reference to Daredevil. I'm kidding, I looked it up, but, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a reference to Daredevil. But also back there, you get a couple lamps and everything. It's pretty cool. Um, but moving upwards, um, to this floor right here, you do get kind of a little kind of trophy art. Um, you can kind of barely see it in there, but you get some trophies, really nice. Um, but probably the coolest is you get a sticker, which there's a sticker right here. And you probably wonder, what is that? Well, yes, it's a cutout of Loki. And um, there is actually a sticker back there, which we're going to take a look at in a minute. Um, but you can take Loki after he's been beat. You can put him there, and it's pretty cool. It's a pretty nice reference. Um, the final sticker that is actually up here, um, the second to final one, um, there's some more stuff. Yes, this thing gets even bigger. Um, there's a sticker right here. It's really cool. Um, and this is actually a representation of the first Avengers comic. And yes, this is what I meant by why they included Wasp and... Uh, yeah, that's why they included Wasp, is because of this. Because um, she was part of the original Avengers, um, which is really cool. Um, but the final kind of little thing up here, and then we have one at the top, which we'll take a look at. But um, right here. But yeah, of course, this is basically just testing the scepter and everything. And I'll remove this real quick so you can see it. Um, but you do get like a little scepter and a little reading right there, which is really cool. And uh, the other scepter was an extra, if you were wondering, just so I didn't have to remove this from this, um, which is pretty cool. Um, but you also do get a couple stickers right there, um, which is really nice. like it a lot. It's pretty cool. Um, let me zoom in real quick. Of course, you got the Age Voltron Jarvis thing, and also you do get the scanning, which is really nice. Scanning the scepter. And you can barely see those because they decided to put them on trans clear studs, which isn't bad. It's just it's kind of hard to see. But... Of course, you also do get a satellite dish up here, which is really nice. Uh, but if you remove that and go to the side, you do get a little stairway. And if you go all the way to the top, the very top, you have a machine that's used to open the portal. Of course, Spider-Man makes a reference in the back. That's how big this thing is, man. But of course, you get a portal that, um, of course, you use the Tesseract to open. And yes, Eric Selvik is the mastermind behind this whole thing. So... I usually put him up here when uh, doing stuff. And it's a pretty nice build. It's pretty cool. He uses these weird pieces back here I've never used before. It's like the most like weirdest kind of build. It's, it's pretty weird. But, of course, you also do get another one of those things I told you about earlier. Um, when you get another arc reactor. And, of course, you also do get some antennas. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of it for the whole set. I mean, um, of course, I'm going to put all the panels on there, and I'm going to show you guys the exterior of all the fun stuff that, you, of course, you can add. But yeah, of course, moving out. It's kind of it for the set review. Um, of course, I'm going to give my the box and all that fun stuff. But the one thing I kind of neglected in this video a little bit, just because it's so hard to see it, um, is, of course, you get these, and you get a bunch of basically posing pieces. And you've seen it all over the whole tower that I've left it on basically so um these things right here you get these clear ones which of course i showed already um but you can legit put them anywhere that there is a technical and it's it's really nice okay it's it creates great playability with this set since there isn't any like stud shooters or anything except like in a couple things um but there's just like a little bit of some stuff in here which is really cool so of course you could take like i did with this right here I took Clint Barton and he's like jumping off, which is pretty cool. So you could take 
um, a bunch of stuff, which of course, this thing right here, the Iron Man thing, you can put on the side right here. And it's really cool, you can actually do this. And you can do that, and of course, what you can do is you can put Iron Man on the edge of that, if I can just zoom in really quickly for that. Um, yeah, I get like this little miniature build, which is really cool. And of course, you take the Tony Stark figure and you just kind of slide the head in there and everything because it comes on a neck bracket, which is pretty cool. And you could do this, or I can take it off real quick and snap it on there because it's a Lego. But of course, you can do this. And it looks like he's falling. And it's, it's really cool, man. I really love that you can do that on this set. And... Of course, like I said at the top, you can have basically any figure kind of like jumping off with that clip. So you can take, um, um, who is it again? Who, who, who did I take? Um, oh yeah, Clint Barton. And what I did basically is like he's jumping off the tower, which is really cool. Kind of repelling off the tower as he slowly actually repels down. Um, but it's just really cool. Of course, I added some at the very top where you can basically have just anybody um, flying. So you can take, um, you could take, uh, who should I take? Uh, Falcon, just take Falcon real quick. It's actually who I had up here originally. Um, but you can take Falcon and you can make it look like he's flying. It's really cool, really like it. Um, barely see him, there he is. Um, but overall that's really it for this whole set. It's really huge. Um, it's, it's probably not my best review I've done just because of how big and how long the set review is going to be. Um, but you can just do so much stuff with this set. There's so much to do, um, of course. And this sounds like my final verdict, but I swear I have more to add to this. Um, but of course, that's it for my set review. Of course, now we're going to get onto the box instruction manual and I'm going to get actually give my final thoughts on this set. The box for this set is so big, I'm just going to do it like this. So here's the box. Here's everything you can do. Um, of course, it has all the piece count and everything down there. And of course, if you go to the top, you can see all the figures that are actually included. And this is really cool. Um, if you take a look on the inside, and um, you can actually see a little image of the Avengers, which is upside down. Let me let me actually fix it. There you go. You can actually see the Avengers. It's, it's pretty cool anyway. Going on to the back of the box, um, you get a bunch of detail and everything. It's pretty cool, um, but yeah, that's that's it for the box. Let me just kind of, it's on this table, man. This thing is so big, I can't really do anything with it. Um, but here you go, just, just do that. Oi, I dropped something, what'd I drop? Oh, I dropped the stand. Anyway, let's get on to the instructions. Let me actually do it from here again too. Um, the instruction manuals are pretty cool, man. You get a lot of instructions with this. Um, of course, at the front right here, um, you get, I, I, don't, I don't really even know what to talk about. Of course, here's the inside right here. Um, here's everything about it. Here's the Avengers Tower. Here's the facts and everything. Um, but here's actually a page I do want to stop on. This dude right here, who actually, actually designed the set, um, is the same dude who actually brought to the table uh, Marvel Modular. So everybody has him to thank for that, um, which is pretty cool. But of course, the first build is just the Jatari and the Avengers kind of tower a little bit. And of course, the um, it ends on this and you have to go to book two. There's three books, um, which I'm going to show you guys all the back way later because there's actual reference on it. Um, but if we take a look at book two, which is book two, it's much thicker. This book took me a while because it's like, listen, listen to that. It's just so thick. Um, but of course, once again, we're getting on the tower work on the tower. Pretty cool. You get like to this step. You get all these figures. It's great. Go to the back. Go to book three. It's pretty nice. On the back. There you go. Of course, book three. One of the thinnest. Um, of course, you go in here. It's pretty cool. You build um, all bag 38 all the way to that. And then bag 39 just builds Loki's Jatari thingies. And um, it says you could win a free Lego set, not really any other advertisements, and there. And if you guys got the reference, actually, it's pretty obvious. If you go to the back, there's the Stark. The Stark is ripped apart, and it becomes the A. It's really cool. Anyway, those are the instructions.
Look how thick this is. They're in the wrong order. Let me actually do that. Okay. There are the instructions. I, I really want to throw this on the ground. All right. Let me actually try real quick. Wow, that was really loud. Overall, this is a great set. Okay. You can probably tell my, my excitement through this whole video. Um, I'm still here. I'm still behind the camera. I know it's probably been an hour. Overall, this has been a great set. It's probably not been the best set review that I've ever done. I really wanted this to be really good because the actual original Avengers Tower actually got me back into the Marvel. I mean, you could actually tell on my channel, if you look at my Avengers Tower set review from 2020 or 20, I think 2020 or 2019, probably 2020. But if you take a look at that set review and you look at everything that came out, out after that, it was related to Marvel. So I kind of have respect a little bit for the Avengers Tower. Now, since I put this on my display where my original Avengers Tower is, I still actually have the original, which I just broke it, which sucks. Let me actually put it together real quick. Okay, yeah, there you go. Um, but here we go. It's, it's pretty dusty, but I still have it. And the fact I can hold this thing in one hand says how big this thing. I mean, look at this. Look how big this one is compared to that. It's probably not the best comparison since it's the wrong side, but... Oh, wow. There's only one Avengers... I didn't actually know that. Wow, I've been used to this Avengers Tower so much I didn't know there, there was only one side for a logo. Um, but anyway, that's it for this set review. I know it's probably been a really long time. It was really ha actually hard for me to film this because... I'm like standing up and using like different tripods and stuff. I don't actually spend thought in my videos. I'm kidding. I like say everything off the top of my head. Uh, this is a great set. If you have the money, you should really pick it up. But if you think about skipping on it, like that's too much money. I fully support you on that, man. I got really lucky that I was actually able to get this set for Christmas. Um, and I have amazing people who actually got me this set. Um, and I'm, I'm so thankful for that because... This is just a great set. It's the most minifigures, the most detailed figures. I know there was a lot of repetitive figures in this set, but I'm just, I'm so happy that I have this set. This thing looks killer on display. Just go look at my excitement in my first video I made on this thing. It's just, everything about this is incredible. There are missing figures, yes. There is probably some no leg printing on some figures, and there's, there's always gonna be that in a Lego set if you're really picky, but just looking at the build, looking at the figures, looking at what you got, it's incredible. And it's they knocked it out of the park. And I just hope that every Marvel modular after this is as good as this. Because this is just a great set. Probably not the best review, like I said. Because this is just much different. And you can see like things that you wouldn't see in a normal set review from me. But it, it's just that good, okay? It really is. Just that good. Yeah, and I know I just flip the camera around randomly because I want to. Um, I know I'm wearing like different things. It's been like a full day, man. Okay, don't blame me. Okay, I've actually went outside and done stuff. And then came back and did this because this is just... This is a beast, man. It's really big. I know I'm doing like a vlogger style type stuff. But this set is cool. I really like it. And it's pretty cool. And you should totally not subscribe to this channel or leave the post notification on. Because you really should not, okay? I really want you to, but you shouldn't, okay? Just don't. Just don't do it. I know your finger is down there wanting to click that subscribe. I know you really want to. This is cringy. Okay, I'm going to wrap up this video. Okay, that's it. I know it's been like an hour, but that's it.